Good evening, America. Today is Thursday, October the 12th. But we're going to finish, uh, start off with the rest of Proverbs 4, starting at verse 13. Um, it has 27 verses. We have pink for witnessing, black for sin, red for discipleship. We'll start off with 13. Take fast hold of instructions to let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Take fast hold of instructions to let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. 14 to 17 is black for sin. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. 15. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. 16. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. 17. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. 18. Is red for discipleship. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. 19 is black for sin. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not what they stumble. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. And they really don't. 20 to 27 is painful witnessing. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my saying. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my saying. 21. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. 22. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. 24. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. Okay. 25. Let thy eyes look right on and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Let thy eyes look right on and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. 26. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Watch where you're going. Watch who you're going with. Okay. 27. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Okay, and that is all 27 verses of Proverbs 4. We are still on obedience, which is submission to authority. Uh, yesterday we read how God has authority over nature, to, and we read Matthews 8. Today we're going to read uh, Mark's 1, how God has dominion over demons. All right, but before we get into, and a wonderful thing about Mark is that we have some red lettering here, which he, which is the words of our Lord. But before we start, we're going to get a little SS here. That's sweet sayings, sweet sayings, sound sayings. 
Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Matthew 5, 7. Um, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and up brittle not, and it shall be given him. James 1, 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbriddled not, and it shall be given him. James 1, 5. Okay? I'm going to give you an introduction into Mark before we read it. Um, yeah. An introduction to Mark. The author is, of course, Mark. Dates written between A.D. 50 and 70. Time span about three and a half years, A.D. 29 to 33. Title from the book's Arthur Mark. Background. A book of action focusing more on Jesus' deeds than on his word. Uh, Mark is the shortest of the four gospel. It is generally accepted that the preaching of Peter, a companion of Mark, is the source of most of this gospel's material. Mark also spends time with Paul and Barnabas when he returns with them from Jerusalem to Antioch on their first missionary journey. Mark leaves early, however, and returns to Jerusalem. After this, Barnabas wants to bring Mark, his cousin, on a second missionary journey but paul disagrees and leaves instead with silas so uh, there's this conflict there as you can see uh, with paul uh, paul and barnabas reconcile at a later date and mark becomes a close friend and helper of paul so whatever the issue was between those two disciples it kind of kept them apart for a little bit and uh, through the grace of God, they came back together and made uh, very good friends and com companionship and helpers to one another. So he became a helper of Paul. So um, maybe we will read a little bit later on as to how it came about that they came back together again. But bless God, they did. They were able to come back together again and... and um, um, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ together. Um, we have written Rome, possibly while Peter and Mark are in prison, uh, to whom generally to all Gentiles, but primarily to the Romans. Contents of Mark. The gospel according to Mark vividly portrays Jesus' teaching, healing, and ministering to the needs of others. Jesus is the perfect example and... Uh, perfect sacrifice for people of all times. His public ministry include exhibits of his divine power over disease, nature, demons, and even death. Um, these miracles also reveal Christ's com compassion for a hurting world. However, opposition and hostility grows against Jesus from the chief priests, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees. Um, finally, Jesus uh, willingly allows his arrest and crucifixion to take place, but his resurrection seals the ultimate victory for all who trust him to save them. Okay. Uh, key words in the book of Mark are servant, immediate. The ministry of Jesus Christ centers around his being a servant to all, uh, and he he. He served all in, in, in every facet of life, even down to washing of the feet of his disciples, okay? Uh, given his life as a ransom for many, Mark's gospel uses the term immediately many times to emphasize the importance and urgency of believing in God's Son now, exclamation mark. Themes, what are themes? PowerPoints, facts that don't need to be proven. Okay, first one, Jesus is concerned about every aspect of our lives, every aspect, literally. All right, point two, fact two, Christ's action parallels his words, 
and so must ours if we hope to be a positive witness unto him. So our actions and our words have to be parallel to our Lord's. If we're going to be witnessing unto him, then we have to behave ourselves like he did. Okay? Not like the world expects us to, but like Christ uh, expects us to. So you, you ought to be more concerned about how God looks at what you're doing or what you've done than how the world looks at it. Okay, because the world did not call you, God did. So therefore, he is your master, and he is the one who you should be concerned about how he responds to whatever it is that we're doing. Okay, Christ's death on the cross paid the price for each of our sins. If we will but turn to him with a repentant heart and trust him as Savior, as our Savior, Okay, if you trust him as your savior, then that includes you. All right. Um, next, there is none no, so down and out that he can ever be beyond the extended arms of God's love. There's nothing you can do, America, that is so bad that, 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 that takes you out of the rim of God's love. Absolutely not. There's nothing because he is able to cleanse you of all of your sins. And he is able to cleanse you, making you white as snow. Okay? Uh, even as Christ came to serve us, so must we also serve others. And we can serve others in, in all kinds of facets. We can serve them by ministering the word to them. We can serve them by uh, being a helping hand to them. Uh, there are so many different ways that you can serve people. You can serve them by feeding them or providing uh, necessities to them. There's different ways that you can be a servant to others, okay? And in all ways, God served us in all ways. He ministered to us. He healed us. He fed us both uh, natural food and spiritual food so that's what we must give to one another we must minister to one another we must confide in each other we must testify uh, what God has done in our lives to each other and we must help each other and that's how we um, represent Jesus Christ okay um, so let's go straight into uh, Mark's one. This is a very long chapter. It has 45 verses in it. We have almost every color in here. We have uh, purple for the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We have gold for prophecy. We have yellow for family. We have quite a bit of purple. Awesome. Uh, we have pink for witnessing. We have I love for commandment. We have brown for Satan. We have red for discipleship. Um, we have orange for your faith. Uh, we have almost every color in here except for silver. We have no silver here. And silver will represent history. So in, ch in this particular long 45 verse chapter, uh, there's quite a few things going on. John the Baptist prepares the way. Uh, John the Baptist baptizes our Lord, uh, Satan tempts Jesus in the wilderness, and Jesus begins his ministry. So there's a lot going on in this one chapter here. And this chapter is uh, regarding how um, God has authority over demons, and his son certainly uh, demonstrated that. And in uh, as many people as he cast out demons from them, um, as we read yesterday, he cast out demons from two fellows, and those demons enter a flock of swines who rushed uh, violently towards the sea and uh, met their their quick demise. So God has authority over nature, over man over demons, over illnesses. There's nothing that God cannot touch, nothing. And his son uh, is just like his father, all right? So we must try to mimic our Lord in all that we do. Uh, some of us have uh, the gift of healing, 
Uh, God gives everybody their designated gift uh, in the ministry. And there are people today in this world that have that gift. Uh, there's not as many as 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 when the Lord was here or during the biblical time. There were more people that um, there were less atheists in the world. Now there's a, an alarming amount of atheists and you have an alarming amount of people who have false gods uh they they bow down to statues they have nose that don't breathe and all of this foolishness but um here at spiritual water we worship the true only god of this universe okay so let's begin uh through our journey verse one is purple for the trinity the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Verse 2 and 3 are go for prophecy, but we're going to be reading it from both books. So I'm going to do the flip-flop as I always do. Okay, so the first one was purple. So every time we change colors, I'm going to go to this book. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Um, verse 2 as it is written in the prophets. Oh, yes, we do have, I forgot to mention that to you, um, which is significant in any chapter. We have some uppercase lettering here, so I will call them out to you as we go along the reading. Verse 2 has some uppercase lettering. Verse 11, verse 15, verse 17, verse 25, verse 38, verse 41 and 44 and those are the verses that we have uppercase lettering in them okay so i think i've made all the announcements let's continue verse 2 as it is written in the prophets here comes the uppercase lettering behold i send my messenger before thy face which shall prepare thy way before thee that was john the baptist I'll read it again. As it is written in the prophets, here comes the uppercase lettering, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Three, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. This was John the Baptist. Um, we'll take it from here. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messengers before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Three, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Verse 4 and 5 is our love for commandment. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. 5. And there went out unto him all the lands of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan confessing their sins. Okay, that was perp that was uh, our love. So let's take it here. John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Five. Then all the lands of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Six, seven, and eight is back to purple for the Trinity. And John was clothed with, John was a peculiar character in more ways than one okay but he was extremely holy he was a peculiar many of the people of god are considered peculiar um because we we just don't blend in like that um okay so john you will see how how different he is even his clothing his food everything was different about this man and this was also the cousin of our lord jesus christ and john was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loin and he did eat locusts and wild honey that's all he ate 
locusts and wild honey seven and preach saying there cometh one mightier than i after me the latches of whose shoes i am not worthy to stoop down and unloosen a i indeed have baptized you with water but he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and he, indeed he did uh, so let's take it from six now john was clothed with camel's hair um and with a leather belt around his waist and he had locusts and wild honey seven and he preached saying there comes one after me who is mightier than i whose sandals straps i am not worthy to stoop down and loosen i indeed baptize you with water but he will baptize you with the holy spirit and once that holy spirit hits you whatever's whatever whatever's on you just quickly disappears whether it's leprosy whether you're in a coffin whether you've been dead for years it doesn't matter what it is once that holy spirit hits you it is a wrap okay um so that holy spirit is a very powerful thing indeed all right so nine is yellow for family and i and it came to pass in those days that jesus came from nazareth of galilee and was baptized of john in the jordan nine nine john baptizes jesus it, and it came to pass in those days that jesus came from nazareth of galilee and was baptized by john in the jordan 10 11 and 12 and straight away coming up out of the water uh 10 11 and 12 is purple again for the trinity i told you we have a lot of purple in this particular 45 uh, verses and straight away coming up out of the water he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him not not just everybody saw this everybody saw this when jesus was dipped in that in that river and came back up that dove was a giant beast above his head everyone saw this okay and straight away coming up out of the water he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him 11 and there came a voice from heaven saying thou and this is uppercase lettering america here comes thou art my beloved son in whom i am well pleased now these are words that were heard by all those that were around everyone heard these words okay and if the words were thou art my beloved son in whom i am well pleased okay there are various times in the bible where god speaks to the people and he spoke to them during the time of moses from the mountain and the, the people were terrified and this is another moment when the when our god speaks and, and everyone can hear his voice and it says thou art my beloved son in whom i am well pleased uh, 12 and immediately the spirit during him into the wilderness okay so let's take it from here from 10 to 12 john baptist john baptizes jesus uh, and immediately, I'll start from nine. It came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Ten. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the spirit descending upon him like a dove 11 then a voice came from heaven you are my beloved son in whom i am well pleased okay uh how old was our lord he was 30 he was 30 years old when he started his ministry okay um 13 is a split verse it's part brown for satan and part um uh part green part green for love okay the brown part says and he was there in the wilderness 40 days tempted of satan and was with the wild beast that's the brown part and the the green part says and the angels minister unto him and he was there in the wilderness 40 days uh tempted of satan and was and was with the wild beast 
and the gr green part says, and the angels ministered unto him. So let's take it from here. Uh, here it says, Satan tempts Jesus. Uh, we'll start from 12. Immediately the spirit drove him into the wilderness, 13, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beast and the angels ministered to him. All right, 14 and 15 is pink for witnessing. Now, after that, John was put in prison. Shortly after he baptized the Lord, he was put in prison. He was put in prison for correcting the king who was having an affair with his brother's wife. Okay, he was put in prison for correcting the king. All right. Uh, now, after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came in, into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Okay, here comes some more uh, uppercase lettering and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. This is all uppercase lettering. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Let's take it from here. 14. Jesus begins his Galatian ministry. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. 15. And saying, this is a uh, red lettering here in this new King James Bible. It says, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. All right. So 16 to 20 is red for discipleship. Now, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw... Now, he's beginning now his ministry, and he's gathering his disciples. If you pay attention, America, you notice that all his disciples are men. Men. Not women. Men. Certain jobs are just for men. Okay? Certain jobs are just for men, even today. Certain jobs are just for men. Okay, now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon, Simon and a Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. They were fishermen. Okay, here comes some uppercase lettering. And Jesus said unto them, here comes the uppercase lettering, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. Come ye after me, and I will... Make you fishers of men. That's uppercase lettering. 18 still read. And straight away they forsook their nests and followed him. Some people when the Lord called them. When Jesus would say come with me. They would drop what they were doing and follow him. They just dropped the net. Just dropped it like it was hot and followed him. Okay. That's how we're supposed to do it. All right. Hey, and straight away they forsook their net and followed him. 19. And when he had gone a little further tinge, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. So the first four disciples were brothers. Simeon and Aunt Simon and Andrew, James and John. When he had gone a little further tent, he saw James, the son of Zabedin, and John, his brother, who also was in the ship mending their nets. All right, 20 still read, and straight away he called them, and they left their father, Zabedin, in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. All right, let's take it from 16 to 20. And here it says, four fishermen called as disciples and all four of them were fishermen and they were brothers as well and as he walked by the sea of galilee he saw simon and andrew his brother casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen 17 then jesus said to them follow me and i will make you and this is these words here are in red follow me and i will make you become fishers of men that's all red 18. They immediately left their nests and followed him. 
19. When he had gone a little further from there, he saw James, the son of Zabadee, and John, his brother, who also were in the boats mending their fence mending their nets, 20. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zabardine in the boat with the hired servants and went after him. Okay, so these first four immediately dropped what they were doing and followed the Lord. Immediately. Okay, you see how that word immediately comes up a lot in the book of Mark? Immediately. All right. 21 is pink for witnessing watching my clock and they went into Capernaum and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught that's pink so we got to take it here uh, Jesus casts out an unclean spirit then they went into Capernaum and immediately on the Sabbath he enters the synagogue and taught so he began his 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 ministry immediately you notice that word immediately being used in various ways. That means right away. Right away. Okay. 20. Oh, my. We have silver here. I didn't see it before. Okay. Um, 22 is silver. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribe. They noticed this immediately. He taught them as one who had authority and not like the scribes. Hmm? Okay, let's take it from here. 22. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Because the scribes, Many of them, even though the scripture was at their, in their possession, where they could get to it, they couldn't understand much of what they should have known, which marveled our Lord. Okay. Though they were Pharisees and Sadducees and wore the priestly garments, they knew nothing about things of the spirit. Okay. The Lord often called them dull, a, a nice word for stupid. All right, 23, 24, and 25 is uh, brown for Satan. 23, 24, 25 to 27 is brown for Satan. 23, and there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, 24, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? That's what they said to, to, the, to our Lord. Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Thou art come to destroy us. I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Isn't that funny? How the demons knew the Lord. Every last demon in this Bible knew the Lord. Recognized him. Called him by name, but the Sadducees and the Pharisees knew him not. Isn't it funny? This marvels me. How the devil knows the Lord, but mankind ignores him. That marvels me all the time. Saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Thou art come to destroy us. I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. This is the demon speaking. 
Okay. 25, here comes some uppercase lettering. And Jesus rebuffed him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. Hold thy peace and come out of him. This is uppercase lettering. Hold thy peace and come out of him. Command. That's a command. Okay. 26, and when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him, 27. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they were questioned among themselves, saying, What God, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirit, and they do obey him. Let's take it from here, 23 to 27. 23. Now, there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. So he had several spirits in him. Several. Sometimes a person can have multiple spirits in their soul. Okay? And this man was one. Okay? Now, there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone, exclamation mark. What have we to do with you? See, we. You hear that word, we. That was more than one spirit in that one man. Okay? Evident of what I'm saying to you. Sometimes a person can have more than one spirit. Okay? What have we to do with you? Jesus of Nazareth, did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God, exclamation mark, 25. But Jesus rebuffed him, saying, here comes red lettering, be quiet and come out of him, exclamation mark, at 26. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him, 27. Then they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commanded even the unclean spirit, and they obeyed him. Marvel at the power of our Savior. Hmm? Okay. 28 is pink, and immediately his fame spread ab aboard throughout all the region round about Galilee. And immediately, here go that word again, immediately his fame spread aboard throughout all the region round about Galilee. That is pink for witnessing. Where's pink? And immediately his fame spread throughout all the region around Galilee. No, there's no actor, singer, entertainer who can outdo God, who can outdo our Lord in fame. None. 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 At all. Okay, 29 to 31. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they enter into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Okay, so far he just had four. Okay, but Simon's wife, mother, lay sick of a fever, and Amen, they tell him of her. 31, and he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. Here goes that word immediately again. Okay. That's, that means right away, America. Right away, the fever left. Right away. Okay? The 29 to 31, Peter's mother-in-law healed. Now, as soon as they had came out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John, 30. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever, and they told him about her at once, 31. So he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she served them. As I said to you, to, you can minister to people in several ways. You can minister to them by uh, teaching them. You can minister to them 
by waiting on them. That is still a form of ministry. Okay. Um, 32, 33, and 34 is brown for Satan. And at evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils. And at evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils. 33. And all the city was gathered together at the door. The Lord got no peace at all. At all. This was 24-7. People following him everywhere he went. Not a moment of peace. Never did he complain. Never. He knew how to disappear. Not even his disciples could find him. He knew how to regroup and find some time for himself. Okay. And when he did, even his disciples did not know where to look for him. Okay. Immediately he would disappear. <laughs> and all the city would gather together at the door. 34, and he healed many that were sick of divers' diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devil to speak because they knew him. Did I not just tell you that? It marvels me that the spirits knew the Lord. It marvels me. Each and every one of them knew the Lord. Okay? 30, 32 to 30, okay, we're going to, we're going to end off with, uh, 34, okay, we'll finish the rest tomorrow, I feel like I'm rushing, Father, okay, um, many healed after Sabbath sunset, at evening, when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon-possessed, 33, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. 34, then he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he did not allow the demons to speak because what? They knew him. Okay, uh, we're going to stop right there and continue the rest tomorrow. I might go back a little bit tomorrow because I felt like I was speeding through this today. Um, I hope that you did understand much of what I've already read to you. Um, and I, I'm certain that you can see where God has, or our Lord has power over all kinds of things. He had power over nation, uh, over nature. He was able to stop a storm. He had powers over the demons who were able to recognize them, even though man did not recognize them, the Sadducees and Pharisees. Even today, um, after all he went through, you have many that do not even accept or believe in him. You have many that um, work, that have strange doctrine that call him only as a prophet. Uh, there's no prophet ever, either in a biblical time or today, that can do even a quarter of the things that our Lord done while he ministered here for three years. Not even a quarter. Okay, so he was more than just a prophet. He was the son of God forever and ever. Okay, um, we'll continue the rest tomorrow, uh, and I'll try to slow down a little bit. In the meantime, um, take some time to pick up your Bible and read it on your own. You shouldn't always, it's good to, to, to have someone read the words to you, but it's even better for you to read it on your own, okay? Um, because when you read it on your own, you can take your time through it. You can digest it better. You can, uh, if you find something you don't understand, you can look it up. You can really take a bite into these words and 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 chew on it and and digest it and get more out of it than when somebody reads it to you. Um, 
Nowadays, the pastors don't even read the entire chapters to you anymore. They give you little bits and pieces of a verse here and a verse there. That's called false worship, and that is the name of the game today. And this is why so much is going on wrong in, in, in our earth because we have gone away from God. And one minute we're, we're talking scripture, and the next minute we're, we're behaving like the world. That's not a true servant of the Lord. Know and recognize who they are because they don't operate the same way as the world does. In the meantime, may the peace of God be upon you. May the protection of God surround you, and may the will of God come from thee. Until the next time, have a wonderful evening.